Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here. All of a sudden. Um, hope everybody's had a good week. Yeah, all of a sudden, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How's everyone and, uh, doing? Yeah, we're doing great. Great, great stuff. So kind of interesting way to start the show, but hey, it's we're live, so it's, that's the fun. That's the beauty that's of being That's as nice live, as I could get right? it, guys. Sorry about that. That's on me. It's, it's on it's me. all right. No, that's great. It's great. We'll take it. But uh, yeah, guys, hope everybody's doing well this week. But, um, you know, before we uh, kind of dive into this, guys, uh, DP, let everybody know where they find us at. Nerdsidecomedia.com, people. We at, Each week we tell you where to find us. Go to the website. You get all our links to our, all our social media posts ner- at Nerdcyclopedia on Twitter, Facebook, and also Instagram. You can find our email there, nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. You can also subscribe to our podcast, um, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. You can also listen to us on our website, too. If you are, are watching us on Facebook, make sure that you are joining our Facebook group, Carbonite Bounty BS. We are on Facebook, so make sure that you are commenting and leaving us some feedback and also interacting with the gang. You know, we love you guys. Um, and basically, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys, that's, that's great to hear. And it's like I said, it's a fun, fun week, man. I think, uh, you know, we got a lot of content out there, you know, even outside of the Star Wars realm. Yeah, glad everybody's here tuning in with us. There's so much to watch out, you know, this, this week, uh, let alone this month. And it's kind of a good start. So, uh, you know, without a further ado, we'll dive into our season three, uh, episodes one to nine review. Um, we'll start a little different this week. So we'll actually start with Hitch. Um, what are some of your initial thoughts of the first nine episodes? All right, so seeing the Hutt crime families blew me away because that that episode, which was episode nine, the last one, was so interesting to me because I was expecting something tonally like a Godfather movie, and they really delivered something a little bit more like a gothic Southern Tennessee William slash Ian Fleming James Bond story, which really kind of made, was so interesting and really tied up everything from the movie. So that honestly, and I know that that there were a lot of other really good episodes here. So this is a like highlight among highlights. There was really only one bad one in this batch. And then I think we all know which one I think was bad. Uh, oh man, I got you guys all out of sorts. Uh, so yeah, I thought this was a really great batch of episodes with a lot of depth, big range of character development. And uh, I mean, I really loved what they did with the first two episodes as well. That set was really, really excellent. I liked it all. I like this set a lot. Really, really good. And a lot of very, like a real variety of different types of episodes are really cool. What about you, DP? Um, I was out on that ninth episode. Which, <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> uh, I, I was okay. The the first eight, it was like, oh man, I'm there and everything. That ninth one, uh, I mean, uh, I was okay. Is he is or or the you know is zero some type of um New Orleans type um you know southern <laughs> Georgian <laughs> with his deep you know southern accent there? I was expecting some gumbo to come somewhere, but you know it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't that entertaining you know as far as me you know as far as I'm concerned. Um, the first couple episodes though, you're right. I mean those they start off with a bang with the cadets, you know um. Um, you know, training and, you know, having to go through their stuff, you know, 99, oh, oh. man, you know, he was such a endearing character and then he ended up getting taken out. Um, I really loved the Academy episode, you know, that was uh, solid to me, you know, when Ahsoka, you know, took over training and they had the, um, you know, the the students and everything, you know, involved in the mystery, you know, um, with the, um, with finding out, you know, uh, the, the food supplies and all that stuff. So, I, just the, the overall, I thought the the I thought this batch was really good. Yeah, and uh, what do you what do you think as well, Ken? Uh, I, you know what, uh, Hitch, I'm glad you mentioned the Ian Fleming thing. I've been I was trying to think what 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 vibe did that whole assassin assassination yeah. story uh, grab? And I, I, James Bond. Well, that 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 was it. So appreciate it. Thank you. That, that was the that was the win for me in this beginning. Ep, um, these these first couple episodes i also in i don't know they they're doing a little bit more for the adults with all the politics like they're really getting into these like yeah. really like talky like we have to t- think about the people and and keeping the republic together and there's but then they they quit and they go to action so they've got a lot they got a little bit to pull the adult into it because it's got some thinky stuff but then um 
you know, Ahsoka with the figuring it out, like seeing the signs and knowing that Ara Singh, and I didn't know that Ara Singh was quite the, uh, like, she's a real bastard. Like, <laughs> really throw, throwing down like that. And all the misdirection that she was able to throw to completely yeah. take everyone off the, off the, because I thought she was going to try again in the Senate home, in, in, in the, in the hall. No, and she knew that uh, Padme was hidden, hidden away. You know, Amidala was hidden away in her room and it had that whole uh, quarantine vibe. I got a little like sort of now, like how it fe would feel mm -hmm. to real worldish, right? If she was actually doing this now, she'd be, you know, she'd be presenting from her home. So that was, that was, but I really liked that story. Um, and the clones, like you said, DP, the clones and losing 99, that was, that was a wreck, but, uh, yeah, I really like it's this season starting out real good. Yeah. And I mean, I second that as well. I, I really like the development, uh, the early development, I guess, of Ahsoka. I mean, I'm not sure the timeline from season two to three, but, uh, you know, she's basically, I mean, and it, it's kind of like the, I guess the fear of Anakin, they give him a pad one and he basically at this point kind of lets her. You know, I just think they're giving her too much too early. And maybe that's a failure of the older Jedi leading to these younger, these younglings is they're just, you know, she's already out there training people. She's doing things, but yet she's maybe, I'm guessing, I don't know, a third year, fourth year Padawan. She's not even a Jedi Knight yet. So I just think like we're seeing with the council, even with Anakin, they let him do his thing because of his power. Well, unless they send some kind of power and, you know, Ahsoka, maybe this is what leads to her, you know, eventual downfall or not even downfall, but I guess, Exile would be the right word from the Jedi uh, Order. Um, so, yeah, I, I liked it. I really like her character development, but I can definitely see kind of the Anakin in her, and maybe the Anakin in her is because there's no direction from Obi-Wan to Anakin and Anakin to her. One of the mm -hmm. things that's interesting and very realistic that they portray here is that a war has started, and so people are being promoted out of their normal career paths into jobs they shouldn't have yeah. because they wouldn't usually be ready for it. They're being groomed for these jobs for later, <clears throat> and we see this all the time. You know, um, <clears throat> like U.S. Grant came back into the Army as a captain at the beginning of the Civil War. You saw that a lot with um, uh, General Patton after World War One went back to captain's rank after being a colonel. So there's a lot of this sort of expand and contract stuff that happens in military when the war happens. So that is very realistic. And the question is, you know, what other choice does the council have besides to send her out? Because we keep seeing Jedi dying. We've seen like what five or six Jedi masters die in this war already. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, if it takes 20 years to develop a, you know, a competent Jedi Knight, well, it seems like right now the kids in the Jedi, you know, in the temple, in the Academy have zero years. Yeah, it's kind of throwing throw them to the wolves and seeing what, you know, unfortunately, it's just like the clones, you know, they're using these academy kids as kind of, you know, war hammers and whoever makes it, makes it. And if not, unfortunately, they just, you know, try to promote more or, you know. Well, isn't isn't that what, what we're seeing? That's what we're supposed to see, the crumbling of the council. Like, this is where things go off the rails. Right. And that's why it really lets uh, the Empire form because now there are no detectives there isn't a really substantial balanced police force anymore to keep everybody in check they're just like you just said uh t mitch they're just throwing them to the wolves they're just like here you go here's a little bit of training here's a little bit of um a few a few tips a couple of drills you can do now go do it see, see what happens and some of them are gonna some some of them are gonna bite it they're just gonna you know and other some of them are gonna succeed because they're natural so who, who would we be looking at? Do you know of any teammates? you know of any like heroes that sort of come up aside from Anakin and Obi-Wan? Are there any others that sort of like come up from the, the smoke and like make a stand? I mean, uh, it's, it's tough to say because if you read books or a couple, I mean, officially canon wise, they kind of keep that, you know, close to the chest. Not too many names out there. I mean, they're creating these characters. You'll have your... With this new Cal Kestis, which would be one. Um, I guess the people in Rebels would be some as well, but there's really no, like, one we would know by the top of the name, like, oh, yeah, this person rose up and, in, in, you know, kind of was the, the one that led, because even now, they're still trying to find writings and find ways to figure out who was actually left. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really scattered on. So yeah, there's not really too much canon material that you'd say like this Jedi survived and, you know, he was the Maverick and kind of was, because as we see now, I mean, in looking at this series, it really brings the, like you're saying, the empire into it because with these younglings being thrown to the wolves, now you see why so many of those became not only real Sith, but dark side users. Now easy wasn't influence them because they had yeah. no direction. So, yeah. you know, and we, we move it further forward to even Luke's Jedi Academy you see what happened with Kylo Ren when you don't give the proper attention to right. a Padawan and what can happen. So it, history re rewrites itself even, you know, however long, 30, 40 years into the future. And, and some of them probably joined the Empire, correct? Right. Yes. Like some of them became it, it naval like pilots because the TIE fighter pilots, uh, as I understand it, uh, the ship itself, no shields. Mm hmm just a weapon all it was was a gun that flew that was it so it had nothing else to it so it would need a pilot that had a sense you know it had a because not all of them crashed into asteroids and exploded i mean some of them were very elite they were elite soldiers so i think some of the sort of the the, the jedi the the uh you know the uh padawan learners that were sort of cast aside and forgot about it, i right. think some of them got themselves into the into the empire that way what? well a lot of his a lot of his early troopers were force sensitive that that was that's who he hunted so yeah you are okay. right yeah that's pretty awesome i'd like to see a little are we going to get a little bit of that in the next uh, i mean they kind of alluded to it and even the mandalorian but you won't get too much of that but i know in, in the books and everything he hunted for specifically force sensitive force you know, sensitive young uh, yeah you know, young okay yeah, you know one cool. thing that's cool about this this set of episodes we talked about how it does the adult politics stuff and and one thing that's nice yeah. about that is Ahsoka gives a pretty good, uh, a pretty good summation of what political corruption is and why it's bad, and it's something that I know you know uh, as we go from a republic to an empire in the Star Wars universe that what an empire is is it's sort of taking the state and and making the state and the emperor the same thing so it's all like the emperor's property it's like what the czars in Russia had the Roman mm -hmm. emperors had this uh, this sort of setup for a time and so ahsoka's explanation here as the jedi being the one that comes in and lectures them about corruption you can see how this is a an organal function this is like what the jedi are supposed to do is root out this corruption they're designed to be an entity that knows what good is because it can tell that's what the force is and it will always act for the good what is this war designed to do well this war is designed to be attrition for the jedi it is designed to denude their ranks because if the jedi is healthy if the jedi at order is healthy then palpatine can't subvert the senate and the republic to his own personal will which is what he's doing so by but first mm -hmm. you stretch them thin and then you start culling them right you start killing the young ones and now this vital thing that the jedi do which is root out and stop political corruption there's nothing to replace that so it's right. it's 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 yes, so it's, much more depth than you would you would have gotten if you had never like watched any of these and it's it's a really interesting episode and, that, and I'm glad DP brought that up earlier. Yeah, I mean, if this thing was like a two hour movie, I don't think it would be a well put movie. You know, you needed this these stretch of episodes. I mean, your stretch of episodes these seasons really to um to really to really call everything. You know, as you guys were saying, down to like you know just 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 seeing the intricacies of the crumbling of like the order and the uh, rising of the empire and see how, you know, seeing how that, you know, goes. I mean, you know, his, uh, hit your real, you know, in depth and as far as history and everything, you just seeing everything just play out. And it really shows how good the writers are to tackling that. Um, the kids, you know, when, when Ahsoka is teaching them, you know, the kids call, you know, one of the students call, calls her out, you know, as far as like corruption, you know, that they have that duty, you know, if they're, um, if they're, if, if, you know, if they spot the corruption to, 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 um, call it out, to, to, um, fight against it, to, um, try to find out and root it out. And, you know, Ahsoka's all for it, but when they actually, the kids start, actually start to act on it, you know, they sort of run into like different barriers of political, you know, um, factions and stuff, you know, okay, well, I'll take this information over here. You know, you don't have to do anything. I'll take this over there, you know? Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you don't know who to trust, <laughs> you know, these kids are just like, okay, well, we find this out, but the information that we, we, we took the Satine, you know, she, um, 
she she only did so much with it and then once um i'm just forgetting names here um once a certain person got that info you know got the wealth of inf the information they used it to to their own gain and everything it ended up at the end of the episode just um they had you know was having to take the um the dude out you know um but it just it just really goes to show how really good the politics are and how they line up with the young ones and also with the old, you know, with the leaders, you know, the so-called leaders. And, and everything. when you think about what, uh, what the prime minister, all right, the, uh, the he's trying, what he's trying to do is exactly what Palpatine's about to try to do, subvert the state toward his own ends, right, and kick the normal organs of the state out to assume complete control. So he's creating a crisis. <laughs> to make people want to give him power. And that is exactly what the Clone Wars are. They are Palpatine's crisis. So it's excellent to have the exact political plot of the Clone Wars shrunken down to microcosm on Mandalore and just dropped in our face so that we, okay, now I'm going to get it when I see it later, right? <laughs> sounds, sounds, sounds like Germany. Sounds like Nazi <laughs> Germany, right? Same, exactly. same thing. And it right? should because... You know, and and I'm not gonna get super nerdy, like too nerdy on this. I mean, obviously, this is a Star Wars podcast. Like, oh, you know, go I mean, ahead, be a nerd. Do, but like, what, if you there's in philosophy, there's a the Plato's Republic sort of tracks what a state becomes as it moves from a state that's uh, toward its own honor and then toward its own military uh, glory and then money and then it doesn't know what it wants to do and because it doesn't have a, a driving goal anymore because it doesn't have any sort of like endpoint, it falls into tyranny. Where it can be captured by um, a man who's what's he call him? He calls him the trickster, or the fraudster, or the something like that, right? Uh, the uh, well, we all, well, Hitler, you know, that's the big the big example <laughs> is the is Hitler, and it's so interesting because you know you see Germany first have you know it's 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 a it is a military like timocracy. It's this it's it's all about military honor. They conquer France basically and declare their they declare their empire in Versailles. And that I'm not going to, I'm going to mm -hmm. stop talking about this in just a second, guys. I promise they declare their empire into first size. So they're all about military glory. They lose a war, their economy crashes, right? They lose their sense of, of nationhood. And then that allows Hitler and the Nazis to kind of take over. And that is what's happening with the Republic, right? That's what's happening here. So it is, you're right. Absolutely right. Ken, it is very similar to what happened in Nazi Germany. And thank the maker. Hitler didn't have use of the force. <laughs> force power Hitler. <laughs> OMG. Where would we be now? You know. Wow. All right, sorry guys. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's it's always good input to get that though. But I mean, you're you're definitely right, Hitch, as far as the writing and how you look at these stories. I mean, and believe it or not, this is the maybe the second or third fall. This is leading up to the fall of Mandalore, as you know. Death Watch, you know, this is when they leave and then you mm -hmm. kind of sprout off into the the Mandalorian. You know, they're outcasts. They're on outlying planets now because Mandalore has been taken over by the Empire because once this guy has come into power, um, you know, Palpatine has seen the need for their Beskar and their resource for the Death Star and everything that the Empire wants to do. So they come in and then siege Mandalore again and eventually take over Mandalore, which is what we see, you know, somewhat in the mandalorian and who knows what will happen with season three but yeah you see as far as that you know and there's you know parallels to whether if you want to talk marvel and you know conda vibranium but it's you definitely get the vibes of you know like you're saying how he's coming into power and somebody will swoop in right over him and and even more powerful and take over and um and in the episode, I, I know as far as like the extended universe, they probably talk a lot about Mandalore. I had known nothing about Mandalore, Mandalorians, or anything before I saw, you know, the Mandalorian. And to an extent, you know, the Clone Wars and stuff, I didn't even realize that, you know, it was such a thing and everything. Um, how much is that was in like the original, you know, um, the the prequel and the prequels and, um, you know, the 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 second batch of episodes was any of it in there i would say zero maybe i mean if okay. i'm being generous maybe one percent i mean there's hints but if you didn't read any books it was all more of a book mm -hmm. comic thing i mean and the problem is when disney bought lucas films and lucas arts they decided to spread things what they thought was canon and expand the universe and so it, it's like you know when disney bought them they kind of repositioned things so it, it's been out there but 
what's canon now and what's canon before isn't, you know, I, I don't know. It's two yeah. different things. Ironically enough. But it's sort of like re, uh, re, 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 reintroducing what was out there into this. Correct. Okay. They're just repackaging it. Repackaging. Ironically okay. enough, uh, the Legends Mandalore is a lot more like the Death Watch. Like, it's just all that. There's none of this other stuff. The right, my, I feel like that's right. Uh, so I'll, yeah. I'll check myself since I'm the expert on the books. Huh, I was right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. But there was all this talk about who was the the Mandalore. And the Mandalore, and uh, Thomas has brought this up in our group. And thank you again for posting there. We really appreciate everyone that does. That, uh, you know, Din essentially is all the stuff that he is, is what, quote unquote, the Mandalore is. And that's who wields the Darksaber. He wields the Spear of Beskar. He tries to save his job. It's a, it's a great post on our Facebook group. Check it out. Um, I think that's, I think that's part of, um, one of the things about this that confused me when I came out was why Mandalore wasn't that, right? Why it wasn't all the stuff we see in Mandalore. Right. And now I can see how they're fitting it all together. It makes a lot of sense. So I'm, I'm enjoying that. Mm. Right. But yeah, you are right. I believe Death Watch was the only thing they really talked about in the comics. They haven't talked about this, I don't know, um, progressive type of, uh, Mandalorian called, I guess we'll call them, you know, more this, these progressives. So liberals, whatever, whatever you want to classify them as. But yeah, I, I, the only thing I remembered was Death Watch. Can we call them the Manda liberals? <laughs> Man, they're, they're dead. We definitely got to find a name for them because they're they're like they're like weird. There's some weird people. Um, they're almost like the Aryan um, model. I mean, they're very they're all blonde. They're all tall. They're very good looking. They're very charismatic. You want to know. You kind of want to listen to what they're going to say. They're very preachy. So they have that that area, that perfect, you know, male, perfect female type of stereotype, you know, that, that Hitler was trying to create. I mean, they're very odd. It's not at all what I thought a Mandalorian would have been. So I got to yeah. read. I got to read some of the, you know, the comics or the books and kind of get some background on it. Cause that, that it just, every time, it, every time I see a, a scene with any of them, it blows my mind that that's what the Mandalorians you know that? are. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, they have a whole polish, like even when they was first introduced in that one episode, I guess like last season, um, you know, Mandalore camp, we're getting some man. What, you know, it, it's, it's a polished thing. I'm expecting like some dirty and dingy, you like, know, like they're fighters in there. Yeah. They're like, they're like, <laughs> you know scavengers like, and and like, no like dirt scars you know they got scars going over right their eyeball. right right, right. But these, these these are like um they're the elite. Teardrop tattoos. yeah they're really you're very uh different than what i yeah. thought would have been what what we would see so i i've got to i guess i got to read a little bit more and see what see what that's about think about the difference like you're saying right that's it i hadn't considered it from that angle which tells you a lot about me i think right i hadn't thought about that but when you think about these these two the Manda liberals, which we'll call them that because it's funny, uh, versus the Death Watch. The Manda liberals seem to believe that if you're man, you're Mandalorian by birth, and the Death Watch seem to believe that that doesn't really matter. What matters is your your uh, investment in the your, culture. Your yeah, yeah, the culturally Mandalorian, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Heart. Yeah. And yeah. So that's a, it's an interesting to see that dichotomy, uh, because I think sometimes that stuff's present in the real world. <laughs> oh really <laughs> oh really never thought about that before. yeah guys i don't mean to listen i don't want to break new ground on a star wars podcast but i think sometimes those things can, can show up for us and that's interesting right because he because we knew like what before this came out we knew that what boba fett looked like because we saw his dad in episode two right. yeah we saw boba of course so we saw we and we see this face right we see the mandalorian face all the time all the time all the time and what's the first thing right. that we hear the mandalorian say when they hear Django Fett, that's not a Mandalorian. They reject him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because he's yeah. not. Yeah. And he even says, I'm a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. <laughs> so you get that whole solitude, like separate. I'm not part of anything, right? So maybe that's really what Mandalor Mandalorians become, is we're not even part of anything. But then when the Mandalorian, the, ep the series starts, we get a sense of brotherhood again because mm -hmm. they are all together. So where does it all, where does it all fit? And where, where does yeah. the break happen? Well, even Hitch knows this. I mean, the <laughs> weird part about this is, so these, I guess, band of liberals, we'll call them, um, they don't view him that, but if you look at how Boba and Django became 
you know, dubbed Mandalorians. That was from Pre Vizsla and Tar Vizsla in the Death Watch when they were in power of Mandalore. So they, you know, dubbed him, you know, like I guess somebody would be knighted as a Mandalorian. Um, and these new ones, you have to, as Hitch said, you have to be born there. You have to look a certain way. You have to carry yourself a certain way. And I, you can't basically be a bounty hunter, you know, and be a Mandalorian. So that was really, you know, the rejection. And it's crazy that we see that, like you're saying. And and it's wild, you know. And I know this. We sometimes we get off topic with this, but the way they write these episodes and and tie it to current day life. I mean, it's it's interesting for an adult. I know for the kids, I know a lot of the yeah, don't yeah. Really get it, but for me, it gets my attention because I can like, you know, see the parallels. Do and it makes you see, see a lot of the parallels yeah yeah i mean a lot of this is, especially the political stuff is just capturing me you know for what we're a lot of stuff that we're you know seeing nowadays and everything but um like you know as ken was talking about earlier it's a lot of the talky uh, you know adult stuff that that's bringing us in and everything it's really it's just so engaging as far as like these episodes um i i, I think ken was talking about earlier the one um the one episode where the 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 assassin was trying to take out um Padme. yeah Padman and everything you know that was did that, that was I I like that episode and like the misdirection and everything you know that they did as far as that um I mean is 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 it was a bunch of stuff so uh, another thing I did want to ask because I I said I was out why are you got what what was so engaging Hitch can with that ninth episode <laughs> well. That's a great, that's a great, uh, great question. And I think that we should yeah. definitely answer it. But I think first, <laughs> first we ought to take an intermission because, yeah, first, because yeah, I gonna, found out today. That was a teaser guys. A certain company <laughs> didn't pay any federal income tax last year. So I don't feel bad about this anymore. So we're going to be back in a couple minutes. Stick around if you're here. If not, uh, you know, uh, we're going to cut to the next segment. Uh, if you're listening on the, um, on the podcast, enjoy the ad for our other show that I'm going to splice in. Hey, everybody. Hitch here from Nerd Cyclopedia. Hey, I just want to come in here and interrupt this episode of Carbonite Bounty BS to tell you about our new show, the Nerd Psycho comic flick show which is a show all about all the comic media you're gonna see we're gonna talk about justice league we're gonna talk about all the marvel stuff that's coming out so definitely head on over to that feed and check it out i know you're gonna love it and without further ado it's time to talk about tennessee williams and james bond And we're back, guys, from our short animation, so I hope everybody got a drink, got a quick stretch in. But I know everybody's been patiently waiting about <laughs> DP's big question he poses. So without further ado, we will dive in on DP's question. You ready? Yes, Ed? I'm ready. What you got? Okay, so DP, before the break, if you weren't here, and you sh I don't know why you wouldn't have been, uh, he asked me what it was about this uh, ninth episode that I found so uh, so engaging. And, uh, you know, I'll level with you. One of the things I found so engaging about it was that it was absolutely not what I expected it to be, right? Absolutely not. I thought it was going to be something totally different. And if you told me that the big controversy episode of this week would be the Sly Snoodles one, I never would have believed it in a million years. Because for me, like, number one, getting to, <laughs> getting to her musical number, which is absolutely, right, absolutely uh something star wars does all the time they talk about it when they were when they re-released episode six they put that musical number in and they said oh, this is just something weird in star yeah. wars right uh so i really appreciated the full-on you know star wars hud he's <laughs> musical number with the twilek background dancers i love that i appreciated that a bunch myself i really i really liked the tennessee williams sort of you know femme fatale you know, oh, Slav wants you to do this stuff that was just out of nowhere. Uh, you know, I watched it with Holly and she's like, is this thing going to try to be sexy now? And she was. And she and it worked. And it worked. And that's hilarious. Hey, the the the, the ending, in, innuendo that was coming out of that episode, I was like, okay. Hmm, interesting. Oh, snoodles. Interesting. I, I, I thought that was great. I thought the idea that there was this love relationship with Zero is great. And, you know, I, 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 I'll I level with you. I didn't care much for the episode before just because it was boring. Uh, right up until the time when Cad Bane showed up. Uh, that guy's always awesome, right? 
Always rules. Yeah. Uh, he always makes all these episodes better. So I like that that he's involved with all of this. I thought that the, the twist of having Zero die at his father's grave was pretty interesting and a pretty interesting way for us mm. to get rid of this character. Uh, I, yeah. I thought the hut, the hut Mama was hilarious. I thought that was so funny that he just came in and he's just like, Mama, I need your spaceship out of nowhere <laughs> i thought that was great too so i i get it i got i understand why people may not have thought that was so funny but i i just all that stuff really hit for me and maybe it's just maybe it just struck a chord with me because i was attuned to that because uh, where i'm from yeah well the, but the huts always are a uh they're always mentioned in 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 the entire U- star wars universe but you never really hear much about their backstory like what did we learn? Jabba had a son in this in this the Clone War series. I, I didn't really know that. I mean, and I knew they were gangsters, but here they're gangsters with personality. I mean, so they're not just they're not just thugs. You know, they've got their thugs with charisma. I mean, they're pretty <laughs> interesting. They're pretty interesting, and I I hope we see more of that. I hope we get more of that. And because that they they define the underbelly, dark, sort of binding element of the the you know what happens to the so the republic crashes there's the empire but then what's the other side well there's 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 gangsters that sort of hold together the civilians like like who i would be you know so i'd probably be going to the huts for anything you know whatever the newest phone or whatever a new new, new something because obviously you're not going to be able to walk down the street and go to go to Dunham's and buy what you want because it's all going to be controlled now. So you're going to go to the huts and get what get what you want. So I hope we see more of that. I hope we see more of the uh, uh, the, the gangster element and 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 the, and the huts. I think this think they're really cool. They're really cool uh, beings. Nice language. I mean, the interesting thing I caught out too that was kind of funny, and we talk about it a lot, but you know, kind of Ahsoka's you know, the end of our mission when she kind of gets basically jumped it and she, she basically loses a fight. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it just shows that, you know, once again, you know, I don't know how between now, I mean, and I'm pretty, pretty well versed in the Star Wars, you know, I don't know how she becomes so proficient with a lightsaber, but between now to how, and it, it just goes to show a lightsaber isn't everything for even a Padawan. I mean, they've, they've alluded to it in Star Wars, but literally, uh, you know, a, a headless chicken, so to speak, or a you know, a mindless Jedi with just a lightsaber is nothing. Because I mean, these these people that she that you know try to get the the child back aren't the most toughest you know opponents. I would consider somebody with even decent training. So it just shows at this point in her you know kind of ascension through the ranks of how raw she still is, how much you know training she seems she needs to go. Because I mean, I, I think any other Jedi that we knew at this point would dispatch those people fairly quickly. I mean, it was. Yeah. So I, I definitely like that, how they show the flaws in her character and how she's not, you know, you know, OP, like, you know, some characters are and how, you know, she's still learning. I, I like that. And when we, from Mandalorian, where we see kind of the heroes are indestructible, you know, these, they, they get scars, they get beat up, there's injuries. I, I kind of like how they, how they allow uh, the main protagonist to, to take damage and, and things like that. So I can appreciate that a lot. Well, she's not a killer like um her boy um Anakin. <laughs> so no. I mean, while she has a lot of um Anakin in her and everything, that's one element that she's just not. You know, no. um Anakin is a um Anakin will take it there. You know, and where Ahsoka, she you know she she won't she won't do that. You know, she's and, more defense. She's more defense. She protects. She's right. a protect. She will do what is needed to protect the you know whatever the right. the. the or whatever mission she's on, but she doesn't have it to go the next step to actually take a life. Right. I mean, she, yeah. she will, and she has, I mean, in some some point, but that's not what her drive is. Whereas Anakin, like you said, DP, he'll, she'll, he'll, he'll run you through from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you guys haven't gotten this done already? Oh, come uh, on. It, it, <laughs> you know, if we killed six people, this would be five minutes faster. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you say it all the time too, as well. I mean, this guy's slotted yeah, kids. Yeah, I mean, so, it's not. I mean, he, he truly, he clearly I mean, doesn't he, care. I mean, we understand that a lot of the stuff that they do, the Jedi are doing, is against robots, and that's part of part of the trick of this show, right? A lot of the stuff they do is against robots. 
And and, and I'm going to make an analogy here. It's something that's going to happen to me very oh, soon. No. So my thinking is this. The first time I change a diaper, it's probably going to be a thing for me, right? You you text me when you get to that point. I'll give you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I will text you afterwards. <laughs> My thinking is that, uh, you know, after a year, it probably won't be anymore. I'll probably just be like, ah, that, done, and then just move on with my life. I'm thinking that Anakin's already several diapers into, <laughs> into his career, right? Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you, T, T. Mitch, you brought up a really good point. So we know in Attack of the Clones that he, he, he slaughtered, at that point, slaughtered children already. So why aren't we really seeing in in um in in the Clone Wars any uh, any of that personality or any of that I don't know if I, I don't know if he's supposed to regret or maybe he's just compart you know compart compartmentalizing you know that what he did but we're not this Anakin we're seeing here is so charming I love this Anakin versus the Hayden Christian Anakin. You know, so far, I mean, I will we'll we'll do the um um revenge of the Sith afterwards and see how it compares. But this Anakin here, I'm I'm like, okay, I mean, that's the, he's he's I love I, I like this Anakin. So it's just a real a grad it's a real interesting graduation for what he did that that major thing he did in Attack of the Clones. And um, I, I will give you a. <laughs> little little teaser. Uh -oh. Your uh -oh. answer, your answers will start to come in this uh -oh. next. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh! I love so it. I, I know you're gonna be. You're probably you're probably watching tonight. I'm sure. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, your answers right will start. Your answers will start to come. Okay. Yeah, we okay. got in 20 years. He's that it's... dude in the in the corridor in Rogue One, right? I and mean, we all know, like you know what I mean. He oh. he's that, and he just doesn't care oh. at all. And it's 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 man. Uh, it's interesting to see him go through this. It is interesting to see them also, like you're saying, it's that propaganda thing, right? Like no one, no one really has a reason to want to come ag come against Anakin right now. He's extremely useful and he's a war hero, and that's a very charming thing. But there's things about him that nobody knows except Padme. Obi Wan doesn't know what he did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he has right. no idea. So I think that there's definitely uh, in some intentional propagandizing that's happening on Anakin's behalf here. And you have to wonder who's doing it. Right. It's Palpatine. Well, well, it's know, Palpatine that's doing it. You know, the weird part about that is, is you're saying nobody knows. The only person that knows something happened to Anakin is Yoda. Cause he sensed it in the forest, but I don't know if he's told anybody, which is even more, isn't that weird? Don't you think the grand master or the head of the council wouldn't say anything because he's the only one who sensed something. But something did happen to Anakin that Anakin. everybody knows about on Tatooine that would have been extremely traumatic and would have accounted for all of those right. negative things. His mother's murder. Right. right. And, and do you know, like you've, so anger, the emotion, anger, which is what drives the, the, the Sith. Okay. Anger. Do you know, you've all been angry, Right. You know how easy it is to move down that path and just become more angry and the then the power and the surge that it, it makes. It's way easier to get angry and continue to, to, to build that anger than it is to pull back and calm yourself. You know? Yeah. And I think that's what eventually, once he reaches the precipice, the top of his his limit, the balance between good and evil he reaches that point that's and it's just a it's just a snowball effect at that point i mean it's so easy to just continue down the 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 the, the rage i mean it's so easy at that point and he has the power too so he's immensely imbued with the force so he's using that and that's feeding his anger and it's just a it just it just keeps going over on itself i mean and you know, you can look at it in your own life when something really, like, really pisses you off. You know how easy it is to keep continuing that. It's harder to pull back, and I think he loses that. He well, loses we, that 
Right. We we hear stories all the time on the news how people are anger and you know are susceptible to weakness. They may beat their children, beat their wives, or do things that you know we wouldn't normally do and everything. But we hear you know things like that happen all the time. I mean, imagine if they were imbued with like the force. You know, <laughs> you know how it will go. It's it's another lesson that Star Wars is teaching us. You know, yes. again. Um, yeah which is what Star Wars, you know, just the overall Star Wars is just about teaching us lessons about life and everything. And um, I sincerely see the appeal now. I didn't see it before, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in coming into the fourth, you know, <laughs> I'm seeing certain things. So, um, yeah, with these life lessons that we're, we're learning here. I mean, like you were talking about, Ken, it's, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And, and the, the strength that it would take to stop, Yes, yes, yes. And calm yourself. So that's what that's what a Jedi is. Amazing. Right? That that's what it is to be able to take that because everyone gets angry and everyone's happy too. But everyone needs to be able to bring everything back and balance. So Anakin loses it. He loses his, his shit, basically. And he just... <clears throat> And he's the only one that's really done that because Palpatine, Sidious, is pretty calm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that guy, unless he's fighting Yoda or throwing Mace Windu out a window, I mean, that guy's pretty legit. Like, you'd sit at a table and have a conversation with him. He's, there's nothing wrong with that guy. He's very the, calm. The, Sidious is an evil yeah. guy. Evil, because right. he is he 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 he's you know plotting everything you know um, methodically you know doing all this you know putting pieces in place and stuff. He's Darth Vader that. is a bad guy, you Yo. know. Oh, <laughs> he, he does bad things, but bad. he redeems himself, you know, in the, at the end of his life. Whereas Palpatine would never that, that redemption is never in the cards for him. No way, hmm. no way, and he's but but he's calculated and calm about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. so he's taken, he's That's taken what makes him so evil. And if yep. we believe that the, the sequel trilogy happened, which we, oh, I know we differ uh, now. We have, we're, we have some people on each side of the schism there. Uh, but if we believe episode nine happened, what's he doing to Anakin? He's got Anakin in a position where he's emotionally confused, hiding a secret and using enormous force power all the time. And if you think of force power, like a muscle, you know, how strong Yoda is, right? Well, Anakin has the highest midichlorian count. He's young and he is using the force repeatedly and using the dark side of the force too. So he's strengthening his connection to both. And remember Palpatine's real end game with Anakin here is to take over his body because Star Wars is actually, believe it or not, an invasion of the body snatchers movie where, where <laughs> the Sith want to take the pretty young Anakin Skywalker and, get inside of him and run him like a puppet because that's what your anger does right. to you. It's a metaphor. Uh, <laughs> no, and that's, and that's a, that's a good way to tie in as far as the ending of the first uh, nine episodes here. Um, so just a couple things we'll, we'll tidy up here as far as everybody, I believe the episode uh, or section two, we're going to kick off is going to be 10 to 17. So okay. the next time we'll meet is we'll be 10 to 17 and, I think there'll be a lot of talking points. I mean, it's it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's a lot. It's my favorite probably bunch of, I would say, the series personally. I mean, I just, there's things in there that I really like and lure that I like. So it's my kind of favorite part of, of a lot of, you know, the, the Clone Wars as a whole. Since, since Trent, since T Mitch is coming up, you know, you know, hyping up this section, I guess let's, let's, the next time we come together, let's come up with our top three moments. You right. know, each of us um, um, out of this out of, out of this particular section here. So let's get that together. We can. Um, and then, uh, guess, yeah, one final thing we oh. can pose to um, everybody that's listening out there. And you know, we I guess I'm not going to be the one to uh, to hide from it. Uh, but there is some breaking news that's coming out in the Star Wars world that uh, I don't know too many people are aware of. But due to the success of uh, you know, DC's, you know, Zack Snyder or, you know, the his cut of his movie, there's been a giant push for the Lucas cut of oh. Star Wars. So that's starting to gain steam. Um, they're starting uh -oh. to talk about 
releasing the scripts. I, I mean, we might not see the movies, but they're talking about releasing the scripts, letting people at least read them, find out what's going on. There's even talks of the five, the original episode uh, nine that was uh, Colin Trevorrow's, which uh, people have done it. You can find it on the internet. They've read the script. It is it is out there, but uh, there are calls for some other some other um, kind of endings due to this, you know, overwhelming success of you know, that, uh, that Justice League release. So there, you know, a lot, there's more spinning in the cards for Star Wars that, you know, uh, the fans and all of us are driving. So, you know, you guys interact with us, you know, it's, we're a community together. And um, if it's something you want, keep, keep your voice out there. It's being heard from what I understand. Hey, if we're spending the money, you know, listen to us at the and very speaking least. Speaking about spending the money, listening to us in Justice League, if you guys like Carbonite Bounty BS, our show from Nerd Cyclopedia Transcontinental Podcast about Star Wars. Well, I have some news for you. There is a new show from the makers of Carbonite Bounty BS. It is called the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show. And it is going to live on the Nerdendum feed. That's Nerdendum. It means uh, nerd for someone who gets beat up on the playground and dendum for additional. So that's what it means. And we are going to be over there on that feed uh, talking about uh, Zack Snyder's cut of uh, Justice League doing a little retrospective, too, because guess what? Uh, Nerd Cyclopedia did a podcast on Justice League original. So new Justice League is out. Back in 2017. Yeah, we hated it. <laughs> we were very yes, mean. we did. <laughs> I believe oh, yeah. uh, we had our first... Uh, our first canonical Nerd Cyclopedia bleeps were in, were in that podcast. Uh, so check that out if you want a refresher on the differences. Uh, but join us over on that feed. We're going to be over there. Uh, you know, Maybe there will be some special guest stars you'll be familiar with. And me and DP will be over there breaking it down for you every week. So we'd love to have you. So go ahead and subscribe. And keep your eyes peeled for the Nerd Psycho comic flick show NCFS. And once again, guys, um, you uh, definitely, you know, we're, we're happy to bring you guys more content across all our platforms. And, uh, you know, it'll be a different flavor. So definitely everybody who's watching this, please pop over there. Um, you know, make sure you're subscribing. You're getting those notifications, as, as DP says, making sure you're listening to it. Because with you guys helping us, the platform's growing, um, not only for Star Wars, but all things nerds. You know, we like all kind of things. You know, maybe we'll get to a portion uh, where we start talking about anime. I know there's... You know, something for everybody. So, I mean, just you guys, you guys are driving us to be able to do this content and we, we definitely want to be available for you guys. But, um, you know, just kind of closing things out. Once again, we appreciate everybody coming on to us uh, and listening this week. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week. So without that uh, further ado, this is the way, guys. This is the, this way. the way. NCFS is a production of Nerd Cyclopedia Podcasts. Nerd Cyclopedia.